Welcome to the program. Conflicts leave scars on people and places, damage that can be difficult, if not impossible, to undo. In the Iraqi city of Mosul, which was once the stronghold of the so-called Islamic State, the casualties included the city's heritage. Following ISIL's defeat, the city has had to confront the extremist plunder and destruction of its cultural artifacts and historical sites. And it was in Mosul that I saw the immense damage that ISIL had wrought as they attempted to rewrite history and wipe out anything that didn't fit with their extreme worldview. These were the remains of a great civilization. The ruins of Nimrud, an Assyrian city that stood between 1350 and 610 BC. Amazingly intricate carvings and some of the finest examples of the ancient script cuneiform. The Lamassu, a winged half man, half ox, that stood guard at the gates of the city for millennia through disasters sent by man and the gods. But in early 2015, the Lamassu met its match. In a slickly produced propaganda video, an unnamed member of ISIL, the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant, proclaims the site Haram. Like a group of teenage vandals, ISIL fighters sat upon the priceless ruins with hammers, pounding the intricate carvings and reliefs to dust. While many of Nimrod's treasures had been taken to museums in the West, some might say looted, a significant number had been left in place. Jackhammers smashed through the walls. Saws and grinders cut through the metal bindings put in place to keep the precious structures safe. A digger collects the rubble, dumping it in an unceremonious pile before more of the carvings are defaced. But even that was not enough. The site, which had only been partially excavated and was thought to contain many more treasures, is then blown up several times. Today, it's a minor miracle that anything recognizable remains. It's amazing to look at these reliefs, which are so finely and precisely carved into the marble. That's one of the reasons why they survived as long as 3,000 years, it's thought. But you can also see in the walls of the modern buildings the bullet holes from where ISIS destroyed this whole place. The city of Nimrud survived 3,000 years in a changing world with many changing civilizations, but it couldn't survive two years of ISIL occupation. And if you look on the ground, you can see fragments where they've just smashed up everything. We can't go much further than this because the soldiers who are guarding this place say that it's still quite heavily mined. Large chunks of stone are still identifiable. A huge and unwieldy jigsaw puzzle waiting to be started and smaller fragments are littered all across the site. From the air, the outlines of the ancient city are still visible. And this is not the only site of archaeological importance in the area. This used to be the ancient empire of Mesopotamia. The Assyrian Empire had been established in this area. So in, in, in Nineveh province, uh, uh, just uh, we have a th three couple, uh, capitals of Assyrian empires, Nimrud, Nineveh, and Khorsibat. In addition of Ashur, in the south uh, east of, of Mosul city, in Shirgat. So, so that means it's very important, actually, especially for the archaeologists who are concerned about the prehistoric. Dr. Sali is one of the region's foremost experts in Nimrud and other sites in and around Mosul. Seeing the destruction of so many historical sites by ISIL during their occupation was heartbreaking, she says. But not everything is lost. It is still restorable. 
So why? Because the rubble is still there in the site. So that means, it, it's, uh, to be honest, it, it will take a long of time. It could be 10 years or more than. But after that, it is restorable. So it's different of the other side. For example, Yahya ibn al-Qasim, the shrine on the river. So after they explode the site, they remove the rubble and throw it on the river. So how we can rebuild the site again? But the destruction wasn't only driven by ISIL's extreme ideology. We uh, discovered in the house of uh, ISIS commander, left side of Mosul city, we discovered around 107 pieces. So those pieces coming from illegal digging. Mosul Museum is where Dr. Sally should be working. But today, it's an empty shell. Mosul Museum was looted in 2003 in the aftermath of the American invasion and had only just been rebuilt in 2014 when ISIL overran the city. It housed one of the largest collection of Assyrian artifacts in the world, mainly from the ancient city of Nimrud. But like Nimrud, ISIL decided that what was here was the worship of idols and they destroyed everything. Although when you visit now, the cases are completely empty and it's not entirely clear if it was looted a second time under the control of ISIL or in the chaos that followed the liberation of the city. Inside, nothing remains of the priceless collections that had been housed here except the exhibition cases that held them. The sale of illegal artifacts was a major source of ISIL funding and looted antiquities from Iraq had been turning up around the globe including a large hall found in the hands of Hobby Lobby an evangelical Christian corporation based in the United States. Sadly, some pieces were just too large to steal and had been mindlessly destroyed. But it wasn't just ancient civilizations that ISIL targeted. Karakosh was the largest Christian town in modern Iraq and an example of more tolerant times in the region. Under ISIL's occupation, the Church of the Immaculate Conception was converted into a training center for fighters who ransacked everything they could find. In the courtyard, a pile of embers remains of what had been a vitally important library, cataloging the settlement of early Christians in the region. Book burning became a symbol of ISIL's oppressive rule, and as they retreated from East Mosul, they torched the library at Mosul University. It had housed one of the finest collections of manuscripts and documents in the Middle East. And despite their self-proclaimed mission to protect Islam, according to those who forced them out, they've done great damage to Islamic scholarship. But after months of peace, little has been done to restore or revive the university, a symbol of great pride to the inhabitants of Mosul. We were here not long after the library at Mosul University was incinerated by fleeing ISIL fighters. You could still hear the crackling of the embers as the books had burnt. But in the six months that have passed, very little has changed. In effect, the authorities have just put a gate across the door so that no one can get in. And that is a source of enormous frustration to the people of Mosul, particularly students who are desperately keen to get on with their education, particularly after having it stalled for two years while their city was under ISIL control. But here, what was once one of the greatest universities in the Middle East has now been reduced to this small pile of books. That sort of neglect is common around Mosul. Although ISIL had been expelled and a relative stability returned, little effort has been made to restore the city's cultural treasures. Perhaps that's not surprising in a city that has no sewers, running water, or even homes for many of its inhabitants. To be honest, the cultural heritage is not the priorities of the local authorities. They just focus on the camps, or how to provide the assistant reliefs for people, uh, how to they provide the service, uh, or the infrastructure. So, but 
they have uh, to focus on the cultural heritage also. And that's a view echoed by UNESCO, the UN agency charged with protecting the world's cultural heritage. Of course, it may sound very uh, weird to say, why do you care about protecting cultural heritage? Uh, 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 but it is important to protect cultural heritage, not only because of the conflict, because it will also serve for the reconstruction, the reconciliation, peace building after the conflict. And that's extremely important. UNESCO had started work in Mosul as early as 2012 to try and protect one of the city's most iconic sites, the centuries-old Al Nuri Mosque. Fighting in West Mosul centered on the famous Leaning Tower, the minaret known as Al Hadba. Then, as ISIL forces crumbled in late June, they chose to obliterate the symbol of the city. And that cultural vandalism is being seen by UNESCO as a new tactic of militant groups like ISIL. In the past, uh, cultural heritage was destroyed in the middle of, uh, of battle, of conflict, because of bombing, etc., etc. But now what we see is that it's also used as a tactic of war to dominate others, to control a territory, to change the history of the people. And that is the, 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 the danger that uh, we see. But there is one ray of light. On a hill overlooking the city sits the tomb of Jonah, also known as the Nebi Yunus Shrine, a site celebrated by Christians and Muslims alike. The tomb has been badly damaged by shelling and airstrikes. But below the surface, new treasures have been revealed. Inside a cavern, Lieutenant Hussein shows us where ISIL started looting the shrine. <laughs> But they went further, as he points out. Tunnels, about 15 in all, going deep into the mound. Some two or three meters long, others go 20 or 30 meters deep. Although they were defensive tunnels, they uncovered a previously undiscovered Assyrian palace. You can see all sorts of archaeological treasures down here. Uh, some fragments of pottery, some stone columns, and down here, what appears to be part of a major structure. And these have all been covered up for centuries until ISIS dug these defensive tunnels. This was clearly done during the final days of ISIL control. On the floor, hair from fighters' beards, shaven as they tried to flee and blend in. And for the present, the full extent of what ISIL discovered is unknown. Mosul remains too unstable for proper archaeological investigations to begin. But on the path back to peace, after two years of ISIL's brutal rule, this once proud city will have to look back to its glorious past.